citizens of Toronto, we are out here today to share with you the good news, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, your God manifest in the flesh. Ladies and gentlemen, these words, this holy book that I hold in my hand has the hope that this world is looking for today. It has the words of life in it. It has a Savior in it. It tells you about the Lord Jesus Christ, your Creator, who came to this earth more than 2,000 years ago to seek and to save that which was lost. He came to this world so that you may have life and have it more abundantly. He came to save your soul from the wrath of God which is to come. A loving God who sent his only son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to pay for your sins. And God's word says, and the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'll ask you a question today. The greatest question that mankind has ever been asked. If you died today, where would you spend eternity? According to the scriptures, God's holy words, you'll spend eternity in one of two places, in heaven or in hell. And God's word in the book of Revelation, chapter 20, tells us and gives us a description of a great white throne and these are the holy words of God and it said and I saw a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away and there was found no more place for them and I saw the dead small and great stand before God and the books were opened and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever, and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Ladies and gentlemen, this is what God's word declares. It declares a judgment, a great white throne for your creator, the Lord Jesus Christ will sit upon, and every man and every woman who was ever born on the face of this earth, who have not received him as their savior, will stand before a holy and a righteous God. And God the Father will ask you on that great day, that great day of judgment, what have you done with my son, the Lord Jesus Christ, whom I sent to this earth as a sacrifice for you on the cross of Calvary. And God's word declares in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27 and it says as it is appointed unto man once to die and after this the judgment. Every man and every woman who was ever born will stand before their creator one day and give an account on that great and terrible day. The prophet Amos said to prepare to meet thy God, O Israel. And I'll say to you today, the citizens of Toronto, or wherever you may be from, to prepare to meet thy God. The prophecies in this book, this holy book, that I hold in my hand 
are coming to pass before our very eyes. It tells us what it will be like in these last days that we are living in. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, God's holy word says in the last days, the perilous time shall come. It says in the last days, the children will be disobedient to their parents in these last days. It says that men would be boasters, proud, blasphemers, unholy, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of the God who has created them. If you look around you today, ladies and gentlemen, where is your love today? Is your love directed upon the Creator, the Lord Jesus Christ today? Or is it upon the love of this world and the things of this world? Where is your heart today? Is it upon the things of God or upon the pleasures of this world? God's Word says, what would it profit a man if he would gain the whole world and lose his soul? What would it profit you if you gained the whole world and died and went straight to hell? What would it profit you? God's word says and declares that funeral home attests to it that your life is just but a vapor. It is here for a short while and it vanishes away. You have a very small window an opportunity to be saved while you're alive. God is a God of the living, not a God of the dead. Some religions teach that you will be reincarnated. Some teach that there is no heaven and no hell and that everything's going to be worked out here upon this earth. It is all fairy tales. God's word declares a judgment. It declares that you will die one day and stand before a holy, righteous God. One time, you'll have a life that God has blessed you with once while you're alive. And oh, oh, has he blessed this great country, Canada. Oh, has he blessed your children. Oh, has he blessed you with this beautiful country and city that we live in. Her bellies are full. We got shoes on her feet. The sun's shining. There's no earthquakes here today. God Almighty has blessed us beyond measure in this country. But who do you give the glory to? The governments who take all your taxes money and spend it on wicked and evil things? Or do you give the glory to God, your creator, today? God says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you die today, you have everlasting life. Do you have a Savior today? You will die one day, and you need a Savior, and His name is Jesus. He came to this earth to seek and save that which is lost. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ today as your Savior, you're lost, and you're on your way to a Christless hell for all of eternity. But God, in His mercy, and His grace, He sent His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to this earth to seek and save that which is lost. He came not for the righteous, but to call sinners to repentance. God's Word declares that our righteousness is as filthy as rags in the eyes of a holy God, which who will have to do? One day you will stand before your Creator and give an account. And God the Father will ask you on that great and terrible day, what have you done with my son? The Lord Jesus Christ 
You can't be saved by any other name other than the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can't be saved by Buddha, Muhammad, Confucius, Krishna, or your own good works. The Bible says they're filthy as rags in the eyes of him whom you'll have to do your creator. There's only one name according to the scriptures given under heaven whereby man must be saved. And that is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus Christ declared, he said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no man shall come unto the Father but by me. Do you know Jesus Christ today as your Savior? Do you know if he appeared upon the earth today, would you know? I'll tell you, if he appeared today in his resurrection body, Revelation chapter 1 says his eyes bear flame of fire, and his face shine like the sun in its full strength, and his hair is white as snow, and out of his mouth comes the sound of many waters. This is the God. You'll stand before one day and give an account. John walked with Jesus Christ for more than three years. And when he saw the Lord Jesus Christ in his resurrected body, he fell as a dead man. This is what God looks like. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Do you fear God? Do you fear man? God says to fear him who can cast both soul and body into hell, not man. What can man do to you? God loves you so much that he gave his son, Jesus Christ, for you to save. This Bible that I hold in my hand, ladies and gentlemen, God's holy word. There's 66 books in this Bible. Not one of these books contradict the other. They're written by kings fishermen, all kinds of walks of life. Not one of them contradicts the other, not one. Every single one of these prophecies written thousands of years ago speak of a Savior. And they prophesied that a Savior would be coming into this earth and that he would die for the sins of mankind and that he would suffer upon a cross and then he'd rise again from the dead three days later. What town he would be born in. What kind of death he would suffer. How much he would be betrayed with. It tells you exactly where he was born and when. And it happened, every single prophecy, more than 300 regarding the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ have come to pass. Every single one of them. And God's word says in these last days that perilous times shall come. There'll be wars and rumors of wars, earthquakes in diverse places. And it says the love of many would wax cold in these last days. I'll ask you today, where's your heart? Is it upon the things of God or upon the things of this world? God. It's holding his hand out all the day long for you. And you may say to yourself, what kind of God would let pedophiles and murderers and rapists and all the wicked warmongers on the face of this earth to kill millions? Why would God let all that happen? God is letting us see the wickedness that is in our hearts ladies and gentlemen, in these last days. And God is long-suffering toward you, not willing that any would perish, but that all, all would come to repentance. All. There's room at the cross of Jesus Christ for every man and every woman who ever stood upon the face of the earth. He is holding his hand out all the day long for you to come to him and be saved. He said, look unto me, all ye the ends of the earth, and be saved. For I am God, and there is none else. Don't look to your church membership. Don't look to your pastor. 
Don't look to your mom. Don't look to your parents. Don't look to your righteousness. Don't look to anything. But look to Jesus Christ, your King and your God. One day you will stand before your Creator. Have you prepared for that great and terrible day? Have you taken some time out of your life that God, your Creator, has blessed you with? And taken a moment to bow your knee to the Lord Jesus Christ and ask Him, Who are you? Where are you? What are you? I asked that question some 20 years ago. Jesus Christ, I heard, came not to call the righteous but for sinners to repentance. And some 20 years ago, folks, I read God's holy words. I heard about a Savior. I heard about a King. I heard about a God who loved me so much that He sent His only begotten Son into this world to die and suffer upon a cross and to shed His precious blood for me so that I may be saved, so that I may be forgiven of my sins. And I saw the Lord Jesus Christ hung up upon that cross some 20 years ago. And I bowed my knee to Him on that day and I asked Him to forgive me of my sins. And boy, He forgave me of a lot of sins. You're looking at one of the most wicked, evil men who've ever walked the face of this earth, folks. I've done all the booze and drugs that anybody could ever do. I've robbed houses, stole cars, been in jail, I've done it all. Every wicked thing that man can do, I have done. But God says, if, He says, if we confess our sins, that He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all our unrighteousness. And some 20 years ago, when I bowed my knee down to my Savior, my King and my God, I asked Him to forgive me of my sins. And he cleansed me of all of my unrighteousness. Oh, what a beautiful thing to know, to have your sins forgiven. And at that very moment, ladies and gentlemen, my name was written in the book of life. And when I die, I'm going to walk the streets of gold for all of eternity, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to praise my Savior, my King, and my God, the Lord Jesus Christ, forever. And ever, and ever. And as that song, Amazing Grace, goes, when we've been there 10,000 years, bright, shiny as the sun, we've no less days to sing right, God's bro, praise than when we first begun. Oh, what a beautiful thing to know. I'll oh, walk the good. streets that's of good. gold for all of eternity, right. ladies and gentlemen. Forever, and ever, and ever, because I have a Savior. Because I humble myself and I bow my knee to my Creator and my God and my King, the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord. Barack Obama's knee will bow to the Lord Jesus Christ one day. Kim Jong Un, that leader in North Korea, will bow the knee. Hitler will bow the knee. And oh, yes. Even Donald Trump will bow his knee to his Creator one day. Oh, what a beautiful God we have. What a beautiful God. He says, come unto me, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I'll give you rest for your souls. Oh, what a beautiful thing to come and have the peace of God which passes all understanding. He'll take you today, and He'll wash you, and He'll make you clean today. And he'll put your name in the book of life. If only you'll humble yourself and bow your knee to your Creator and your God, the Lord Jesus Christ, today. What an awful thing for many who will come that day, that great and terrible day, and say, Lord, haven't we prophesied in thy name? Haven't we done many miracles in thy name? And what an awful thing to hear your God and your Creator say, I never know you. Is that what God is going to say to you? I never know you. Praise God today. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And if you're alive today, folks, and you're breathing the air that God has blessed you with, 
and you have food in your belly that God has just blessed you with. And he's given you life today. Today. Today is the acceptable time. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day to reach out to the nail-scarred hand of the only Savior this world has ever known. There is only one name given under heaven whereby man must be saved, and that is the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. There is only one grave on the face of this earth that is empty today, ladies and gentlemen. There's somebody in Muhammad's grave. There's somebody in Confucius's grave. There's somebody in Buddha's grave. There's somebody's in everybody's grave. But the grave of the Lord Jesus Christ is empty because he said before it happened he would rise from the dead. And because he rose from the dead, when you die, you rise from the dead with him as your savior. He said, I am the resurrection and the life, and no man, no man can be saved outside of the Lord Jesus Christ. No man shall come unto the Father but by me. This is what Jesus proclaimed. God, your creator, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. I forgot to put my